It's really isolated. It's a three hour drive from the nearest town, so people are really tight community right now. I don't know the exact number, but there's about roughly 300 people. The community is remote. Uh, there's no electricity down there. Um, there's phones, there's internets, but there's uh, like a big generator. Didn't have a doctor here for a long time. At that time, there was not very many um, drinking of alcohol or the use of drugs, so lifestyle was easier. So when I was raising kids, my children back then didn't didn't drink alcohol. They just they just played. We're modernized people, like it or not, but we still need to hang on to that traditional cultural stuff that we have. Gundani is a Janitian, Rungatsa is a Janitian, and did Chahias take this is good idea? Did do he oh? People at race taught me how to speak the language, taught me how to live off the land, you know, how to eat the fish, moose, all these kind of stuff are the ones that gave me this. And that's something that they're losing in a fast pace. My name is uh, Sherry Hewson, and I work as the casual community health nurse here. There has always been, for 15 years, uh, one mental health worker who comes and she saw five or six people each time she was here, typically the same people. So we were really only getting services for sort of under 10 people. They just wanted to help themselves because of the past problems that they, like, you know, the drugs and the alcohol, the violence. Um, all these different things that's happening in our reserves and yeah, that's what they want to deal with. The issues were just getting worse. The, the um, services that we have were not helping. Some of them don't, don't like to go to a treatment program, you know, like at treatment centers. Because I work up in the treatment centers, there's a few of them that just like, no, no, it's too strict. And that's what she hired me for and I didn't realize what she hired me for until I got there. Let's introduce the Western and the traditional dimension together and see what we can do. We didn't put the words health on it or mental health or rehab or any of those words. It was a wellness camp. She asked us if we can do some stuff with the kids and we came up, me and my wife came up with some key ideas like the wagon trip, the potato mountain trip. When you start working with the youth first, they're just more open to, to learning new things. They've kind of influenced their parents and their cousins and their aunts and uncles to, to be involved and slowly walls started coming down. And Yeah, it was actually exciting for most of us because some of the little kids haven't been to a powwow before. After the powwow, I felt tired and I felt like we accomplished a lot. And I was proud of, proud of everybody. All of their hard work paid off. A lot of the parents were very proud of that they could see their um, children dancing and representing Honey Bergen. I think all these um, activities, the gatherings, is keeping the youth away from drugs and alcohol. That's what we'd like to see. So once a year, we have everybody on horseback and wagons, and they travel for a week to get to town, and they go to the Williams Lake Stampede. We just heard stories from the elders, and they've been talking about wagon trips from before, they used to go to town, like bring cows in, hit some spring salmon and do some hunting and sell some cows. And we just never heard any of that for 30, 40 years, I think the last last time we heard of it. That's a big part of what that's his caught in that, you know, it's an annual adventure, like for the young and the old, you know. When you're on a wagon ride, you have certain tasks to do and you, and you better do them, you know, <laughs> otherwise, you're gonna hear about it, right? It kind of opened Nimai's eyes, showing, showing that we are still a strong horse culture and mixing the modern with the, with our tradition. So you're getting the best of both worlds. And the second big highlight of the, the project is our Potato Mountain trip. Oh, well, Potato Mountain, um, keeping the kids entertained, 
all I was using is just the natural resources around me, like there's glaciers we can go slide in, or we can take the horses out for a ride, or there's data picking we can go up there and data picking, or there's just similar like tag games in that sort of area. All the younger people hike or horseback ride up into the Potato Mountain Range, and we helicopter in the elders and our supplies. On a Potato Mountain, I mean, I can see a lot of the elders that used to do that before or really enjoy it. We always had uh, a team approach or groups or family units that had a challenge or a goal that they were to accomplish. So we work together like that. If you got people working together like that uh, as one, it, it definitely will work. Keeping it fun is probably one of the most key goals. Keeping it simple, doable, those are key stuff that I, I kind of kept in mind. There are different people than when they come in here to see a doctor, right? I see them in a different version. They're out on the land there, they're riding a horse, they're picking wild potatoes. Put them in another space than they would if they were just here in their houses or here in this clinic. After all of the events, people are getting more engaged in the community and people are taking initiative, which is really great because I think it has a lot to do with their self-esteem before. They were just so shy because they're so isolated. They're so shy and almost embarrassed to get up and, and start things. I helped out in medicine camps, wets, um, hunting, uh, treatments. My oldest granddaughter, she likes making dried meat and she always wants um, to help me. She gets right in there. And I've noticed lots of younger kids, they really get into it. I can see the change in people it's slowly coming back. It's not gone, it's not dead. We haven't lost it. It's sleeping. All you gotta do is just wake it up.